So continuing with our idea of domain and range, domain and range falls into one of two categories. The first option is that they can be a set of If they're a set of numbers, they're a set of distinct objects, people, letters, or numbers. So we could list out five people, that would be a set of people. We could list out six numbers, that would be a set of numbers. The sets are what sets are what we call discrete. And discrete sets are made up of isolated points that can be written as a list. So it contains very specific numbers. Like a set could be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And dis dis a discrete set can either be finite or it can be infinite. It's probably going to help to know what that those two words mean. So if something is finite, that means it can be counted. Like you can say there's 10 objects in this set. If it's infinite, that means it goes on forever. So you can't actually count it. But a discrete set could be all the whole numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to a million. Our other type of set is a continuous set. A continuous set covers a range of points, including those between isolated points, and cannot be written as a list. So an example of a continuous set would be all the numbers between 1 and 2. You would not, under any circumstance, want to write all the numbers between 1 and 2 because you would be writing every single decimal remotely possible, and that would make you a completely insane person. So that would be a continuous set. So when we use discrete sets, this is the important part. If they are discrete, they use what we call the fancy brackets. The way you can remember that is if you think about the word discrete, you can spell it with a fancy bracket because they look kind of like an S. If they are continuous, then they use either parentheses or a square bracket. So you could say that it's continuous with a parentheses or continuous with a bracket. We're going to come back to this table in a second. We're going to go down here and determine first which, if, which sets are discrete and finite, discrete and infinite, or continuous. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue these tables down a little further because there's a couple things I want to write down here. If they are discrete and finite, they're going to use the fancy brackets. If they're discrete and infinite, they're also going to use the fancy brackets, but they're also going to use the decimals, the three dots that means continuing on. If they are continuous, then they are either going to use parentheses or brackets or some combination of those. So we're supposed to figure out of these one, two, three, four, six sets, which ones are discrete and finite, which are discrete and infinite, and which are continuous. So for time's sake, because I don't really want to write these out, I'm going to circle the discrete and finite ones with pink. I'm going to circle the discrete and infinite with blue. And my continuous are going to be green. So looking at the first one, it's one, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. Well, it has the fancy bracket, so that makes it discrete. It has the dot, 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 so that's going to make it discrete and infinite. This means that it has the numbers 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, but the dot, dot, dot tells us it just goes on forever and ever and ever. The next one has a square bracket and a parenthesis, so that makes it continuous. This means that it is, consists of every single number between 0 and 6, which wouldn't seem like that much, but if you think about decimals, it has 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0 0.45, 0 0.46, 0 0.47, 0 0.48, 0 0.49, 0 0.50, 0 0.51, 0 0.52, 0 0.53, 0 0.54, 0 
and so on and so on and so on, and you don't want to write all those numbers down. So that's why you get to use what we call set notation. The third one has fancy brackets and no dots, so it's going to be discre discrete and finite. That means the only two numbers in this set are 7 and 9. The fourth one has the fancy brackets, and again, no dot, 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 so it's also discrete and finite. The fifth one has parentheses, so that makes it continuous. And the sixth one has the fancy brackets and the dot, 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 so that makes it discrete and infinite. Again, we'll go back to that table that was on the previous page in a little bit. For now, we're going to continue with this idea of discrete and continuous sets. So in a mapping diagram, the domain, as we learned last time, is a set of all x's, or the all values on the left-hand side. And in ordered pair notation, the domain is a set of all the x's contained in the ordered pairs. So this question asks us, what's the domain of f of x? Since we're looking at our domain, we're looking at the x's, which are on the left-hand side. Well, in the left-hand side, we have the numbers 3, 5, and 7. Since those are the only three numbers in there, this is a discrete set so we're going to put fancy brackets around it. So looking at the next question, what is the domain of g of x? So it's given us another different problem. Okay, so our domain is our x's. In an ordered pair, which is parentheses with x comma y, our domain is the first numbers. So if this question wants our domain, all it wants to know is what are the first numbers in here. So I'm going to mark out the second number so we're not confused by them. So our domain in this case would be negative 5. There are two negative 5s, but we don't write it down twice. We just write it down once. Negative 2, negative 1, and 0. And those are the only four numbers in there. So again, is it is a discrete set. So we're going to use our fancy brackets. In a mapping diagram, the range is the set of all values used on the right-hand side. And in ordered pair set notation, the range is all of the y's that are contained in the ordered pair. So it wants the range of this function down here, of f of x. So it wants this range. Well, the numbers in our range would be 6, 8, 10, and 11. And that's the only numbers there, so we're going to have to put fancy brackets around it. So the next question says, what's the range of g of x? Well, think about our ordered pair. It's always x, then y. x is our domain. Our y's are our range. So if it wants our range, then we're not looking at the first numbers. We are just looking at the second numbers. So our range in this case would be 7, 8. The next number is 8. We already wrote it down. Then 8 again, then 7 again. We already wrote those down. So it's just 7 and 8. All right. So I want you to go back to the first page. And we're going to fill in this table so that we can actually answer all the rest of these questions. So we told you, I told you with continuous functions, sometimes use parentheses and sometimes use brackets. The difference is that if you see parentheses, that means that the value is not included. So both of these have parentheses, so the first and the last value in this notation are not included. So if we were writing... 1 comma 6, that means every single number between 1 and 6 is part of this, but not 1 and not 6. So the first number would be like 1.00000000001. The last number would be 5.9999999999. 6 would not actually count. If they both use brackets, that means that they both count. So the value is included for both of these. And then sometimes you have a combination of the two, like this one. The first value has a bracket, so it is included. 
but the second value has a parenthesis, so it is not included. And in the last option, this first one had a parenthesis, so it was not included. And the last one had a bracket, so it is included. And this comes in handy with domain and range. So it asks us, what is the domain and range in interval notation of any non-horizontal linear function? So we told you, or I told you earlier that any line, the domain was all real numbers. And the range was also all real numbers. Well, in interval notation, what that means is that it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that would be our domain and range because that's what all real numbers means is that it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and it never stops. For our parabolas, well, if you'll recall, our domain was all real numbers, so our domain is still going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range is going to be a little bit different. So what's going to happen with our range is if our parabola opens up, then our range is going to look like this, where this value here, this y value, comes from this ordered pair, just like it did before. So whatever that y is, is going to be this one. So looking at this graph, if we look at this point here, this is the ordered pair 0, 1. So that means our range is from 1 all the way to infinity. That's the same thing as saying y is or greater than or equal to 1. It's just a different way of writing it. So we have this other one. 2x squared minus 5, and they give us this graph. Well, our domain, we know because it's a parabola, is always negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range, because it opens up, is going to have to do with this point. Well, that ordered pair is the ordered pair 0, negative 5. So our range goes from negative 5 all the way to infinity. Don't worry, we're going to do another table like we did on the last one. So we're going to draw a table. With three columns, just like before. We're going to have our graph. Our domain. And our range. We're going to have three graphs in here. We're going to have lines parabolas that open up, and parabolas that open down. For all of these, our domain is always negative infinity to positive infinity, because our domain was before all real numbers, and the way you write that interval notation is negative infinity to positive infinity. Notice that whenever I write infinity, I always use parentheses, and the reason we use that is because you can't actually touch infinity, and that's why you don't use brackets there. All right, for a line, our range is also negative infinity to positive infinity. For a parabola that opens up, remember this point down here is always going to have an x and a y. Our range is going to be bracket y comma infinity. So whatever this y value is here is going to be here. If our parabola opens down, again, this is still an x and a y, but our range will be negative infinity to whatever this y value is here, and it will have a bracket by the y. So that's how your range and your domain are always going to look. All right, number one. It asks us which of these are discrete. Well, remember, if they're discrete, they have the fancy brackets. And if they're continuous, they have parentheses or the square brackets. So it wants to know which ones are discrete. Well, 
The first one has fancy brackets, the third one has fancy brackets, and so does the fourth one. For question three, we're supposed to figure out which ones are continuous. Well, continuous are going to have the parentheses or square brackets, which none of those had that, but there was two that had parentheses. Number five, it asks you, in six, it asks you to identify the domain and the range of these mappings. So our domain would be four, five, and nine. And anytime you're identifying the domain and range from mappings or ordered pairs, you always use fancy brackets. The range would be two, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, for number seven, we're supposed to identify the domain and the range of the discrete and finite functions. So just recall that your domain is on the left side and our range is the numbers on the right side. So our domain would be all of the x's, which would be negative eight, negative two, 0 and 10. Remember, we don't write negative 8 twice just because it shows up twice. And we do put fancy brackets around those. Our range would be the numbers on the right side, our y's, which would be 4, 9, 14, and 6. And again, we're going to use the fancy brackets. I'm not going to do 9, so you'll need to do 9, but I am going to do number 10. So it asks us to use interval notation and what is the domain and the range. Well, looking back at your chart, your domain is always negative infinity to positive infinity. And your range. So this time, our parabola opens down, which means it's going to go from negative infinity to some number and a bracket over there. So we've got to figure out what this number is here, whatever that value is at the top. Well, if this is 5, that means each of these lines represents 1. So this ordered pair would be 0, 6. So our range would go from negative infinity to 6. And that's how it would be written.